What was your experience like with the whole SNL debacle thing? What was that like? Uh, it's, it's very, very crazy. I don't know. It's tough to... There's not many people that have you can even talk to about it, yeah. you know, because it, it fucks you up a little. Like, it makes you, like, uh, not trust people and shit for a while. Like, in what way? I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's But the, back to the main, the experience of it was, like, you just, uh, it was kind of surreal because I went from, I was one of the first people to get, like, canceled or however you want to say it, consequences, however, yeah. however you want to say it. <laughs> doesn't matter what we call it. It is what it is. Right. But. Uh, I was one of the first people to go from, I was doing, I was poor. I was not famous at all. I was poor. And then I got canceled immediately. Like that was my thing. Like, right. It was now, a very different experience. You didn't get experience. famous and then yeah, get canceled. Yeah, most people that get canceled are, yeah. You got canceled on the way. I got canceled immediately. Yeah. They, they literally were like, how about this guy? And everyone was like, no. So you got cast on SNL. Yes. And then what happened? Um, so I found out I was getting on SNL the day before they announced it. So I got a call. They're like, hey, we want to put you on the cast. The whole time I was, we'll start from the top. <laughs> my, my agents and all those people, they were like, You're, do you want to audi- or do you want to write? Do you want to send a packet in for SNL? And I was like, no, I'm not going to be a writer. I'm never going to, I won't work on that show. And then I guess they saw me at JFL and Comedy Central thing, and they were like, we like him. We want him to audition. He can come straight in to audition. So I went straight to the main stage for the audition. And the whole time leading up to it, I was like, I'm never, I'm never going to get this. I, I don't care. I want to do stand-up. I kind of hated SNL at that point. Because <laughs> every, t- every sketch was like, you know what it is. Yeah. And then I was like, I'll never fit in there. And then when, we, when you go to audition, it's just you just wait your turn in a green room, and they keep you there extra long for like two or three hours to like make you nervous. Really? But I knew I, I was certain I was never going to get it. And I really wasn't nervous. I was in there fucking dipping, hanging out. <laughs> and then they were like, all right, it's your turn to go. But that's when the nerves hit. Like, you walk in and you see the main stage. Because that's what you audition on, is like the stage. Wow. And it's a totally empty studio. The whole room's empty except for a table of, like, writers and producers and Lorne Michaels. And then you go on and they're like, three, two, go do five minutes. Wow. In front of just a camera right And are you doing stand-up? I did stand-up. Wow. I did five minutes of stand-up. That's all. And then uh, I ran into Michael Che that night, and I was like, I was so nervous. Like, I was so nervous when I was auditioning that I had to, like, hold the mic against my chin because my hand was fucking shaking. shaking. (laughs) It was crazy. There's no one in the room. You just have to do stand-up for five minutes to no one. That's so weird. It was so weird. And and you're not supposed to look at or acknowledge the table of writers and producers or whatever. What? They have rules? They have rule they have rules that your agents tell you. Oh. They never told you any rules. So your agent says do not look at the writers. Yeah, they're like don't even acknowledge them, pretend the room's full, just go. And everybody was like they're never going to laugh. The table, Lorne, all them, they're not going to laugh. First thing I said, they all started laughing, and I was like I was supposed to not acknowledge them, but you know, I was doing stand up. Do you remember so they, what you said? No, I don't. Genuinely. You just just did a bit. Yeah, I was just yeah, I was I was nervous. Uh, but as soon as they started laughing, I was like, <laughs> and then went back to you know what I mean. I was like yeah. looking at them. I I could see they were laughing, and you, I was told the whole time no one's gonna laugh. They were laughing, and I was like, oh fuck, I did pretty good. Ran into Che that night. I was like, ah, I sucked. I was nervous. He was like, no, you were, that was good. Then a couple days later, you get a call back, and you go into the office, and you meet everybody, and you walk around and talk to everybody, and the people I was with that were also doing that. Then you go into Lorne Michaels' office to meet him. So the three people I was with, they all went in slowly, met him, left. One guy didn't even get invited in. They just sent him home, which is fucked up. They invited him to the callback, and then we're like, no, never mind. Wow. And then they kept me there for an extra like hour by myself. And I was just sitting there like, oh, fuck, I got this. Like I'm going to be on it. Like, this is, I can't believe I got this. I wasn't even excited. I was just like, this is wild this is fucking nuts <laughs> and then i go in and meet with lauren and he's he's the man he's a nice guy and he was like oh, i'm gonna use you but i don't know how and like all that shit and then time passes and i figured they were gonna ask me to be a writer because that's usually how it goes yeah usually you work on the show to ex- experience what the show's like but i don't know i didn't want to be a writer by all accounts, that place is a den of thieves. Everybody, yeah. A I've... den of thieves. You, you hear Jim Brewer's account of the, the climate in that place? Yeah. And it's horrific. Yeah. They're all stealing from writers. They're stealing from performers. 
if you're a writer and you submit your packages, the, the, the higher up writers will steal your shit, according to Brewer. Yeah. If you submit a package, they own that package, even if they don't hire you. I know that. So if you have some great premises, they decide they're just going to take your premises yeah. and not hire you. They they own all those bits. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, I don't I don't I don't I don't care about writing. I didn't want to be a writer. Right. So I was course. like if even if they offer me the writing thing, I was like I, I don't want to take it. I think I would have at the time. But anyway, <laughs> they they asked me to go straight to cast. So I was like, yeah, I'll definitely do that. Lauren calls says, "Hey, we want to use you on the show." We're gonna announce it tomorrow. He was like, "Do you have anything uh, you want us to check out?" Like, they have people that vet you, right? But they they're not used to people having podcasts, right? So they'd have to go through hundreds. They would. They go through your Facebook, shit. your Instagram, your Twitter. <laughs> I, I was just like, I'll just delete all that shit. I don't care. Delete it all, <laughs> right? But I was like, I also have a podcast, and they're like, "Yeah, what's that?" And I was like, I don't know. I say like gay and retard a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, they were like, "Oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it." <laughs> so I was like, "All right, we'll see." And uh, so the day they announced it, it was, a, it was it was cool. It was very cool. You hear from everybody you've ever grown up with. They're all like, "Holy shit! What just like? I can't believe you're on this." And then so that lasted for about like three hours before an article came out that was like, "Here's what this guy says." There's a clip of me saying some, you know, unsavory stuff. Yeah, but talking shit. It was it was the one podcast we ever filmed. That's the one they used. Wow. And it just happened. It, and it was funny, too, because people were like, man, they really had to dig to find this. I was like, yeah, it's probably like three minutes in. <laughs> it was like we had one podcast online, and it was three minutes in. Well, uh, it's yeah. what we were saying earlier. That's what podcasts are, and that's what comics do a lot. We talk shit. It doesn't mean you really mean those things. But yeah. the idea today is that talking shit is not real. They want to take out of context phrases and sentences that you've used and put them in quotes and make you look like a monster. Yeah. Who, yeah, for sure. It was only one article that came out. No, there was a quite a few. So many articles. I was, I think I was number one on Twitter for like three straight days. Wow. Of just getting fucking eviscerated. Did you read it all? Oh, I read all. Of it. Oh no. Yeah, everybody was like, "Stop reading comments." I still read comments. I Do read you? every comment. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Oh, it's it's fucked up, and it's crazy too, because I'll read like ninety good ones and then one bad one. The one bad like, one will fuck you up. Just depends which one it is. Right. You know, I, I'll get called like. Uh, you know, fat retard constantly. I'll be like, yeah, whatever. I can, I can walk through that, no problem. Right. But then there'll be one that's like, he's nervous. Like something, something where they get you, where they, they yeah. know you. Yeah. Like he laughs at his own jokes on every podcast. It's like, oh, fuck. Do I? Shit. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so I get, all that stuff comes out. And it was funny. This is funny. I went into Lauren's, Lauren Michael's office and he was talking. And I was convinced I was getting fired. Like I knew I was getting fired. Because if they didn't get me on that, there's so much more. <laughs> so much worse. <laughs> and uh, so he was talking to me, and he was like, no, we think we can. He's like, if we just get you to the first episode, like people will see you're not a piece of shit person. Right. Like, just talk. And I was like, whatever. I'll do, if I just if I get fired here, whatever, I'll just go do Joe Rogan next week, and I'll be fine. Anyway, I thought that was funny. No? What? I was like, oh, I, I literally you thought. I literally thought that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought it would be funny. Well, it could have been funny. Yeah. I was booked up, though. No, it was fine. I, it was just funny to <laughs> truly... That was a conversation I actually had. Really? In Lorne Michaels' office in the middle of that. That's hilarious. I, it was, I was in pure fucking panic. Terror? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But... Because I remember somebody contacted me, like, to have you on. And I was like, I don't have any room. Like, for a yeah. long... I could do, like, an emergency podcast, but I'm like, let me let I'm, this dude ride this out. Yeah. And then we'll do one eventually. Truly glad that that did not happen. Because I would have come in emotional. Yeah. I would have come in like, guns what happened blazing. to me isn't fair. Right. You know? and, I, and I never felt that way. Like the whole time I was like, I kind of get it. When get someone it. gets really canceled, you need perspective. Yeah. You need, you know what it's like? It's like you need that venom to work its way through your system. <laughs> and then you develop a, a certain amount of immunity to the actual moment. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it ended up being a good thing. So when Lauren pulls you in the office and says, we just have to get you to the stage, we just yeah. have to get you to an episode, then what happens? It just, it, just kept, it just kept steamrolling. Like, it never, it didn't dissipate at all. Like, it kept being like, no, you guys need to fire him. And yeah, I get it. Because, and then, well, that's where the fun is. Yeah. The fun in going after someone is not going after someone and then no consequences. That makes them sad. 
Yeah. What makes them happy so they can get you fired. Yeah. And that's, yeah, they did. They did a good job. Yeah, good job, got everybody. Me. Yeah, and it's fine. Look, the whole Dude, time. Dude, here's why it's fine. Your sketches that you're doing, what is it, Gillian Keeves? Yeah. Those are the best fucking comedy sketches that are on the internet right now. And Thank I'm not, you. I'm not bullshitting. The only thing that's at the same level is Kyle Dunnigan's shit. Oh, man. Kyle Dunnigan.